All right, monsters. Good afternoon. Um, I'm back for a second video, and let's see if we do if I do a better job uh, than the last one. Now, a lot of you said that uh, the volume was very light, very low in the last one. So this time, I jacked up the volume, um, and let's see. Uh, tell me if this is better this time. Now, we have earnings season is mostly over. There's not much. Uh, there's not much fun stuff coming out and uh, so but there are two companies that will be reporting earnings tomorrow morning that I'm looking at here and I just wanted to uh, quickly point out a few things that are on my radar and how they're acting the first one is Actuant Corp ATU this is the uh, annual chart um, ATU is a small cap that provides the uh, um, mooring services to oil offshore services uh, or mooring services to offshore drillers. Now, what is exactly mooring services? Um, I had to kind of just look it up myself. But basically, if I go here, um, basically a mooring service is tying a boat to a fixed structure, uh, you know, using the uh, the anchoring, the anchor, so such as a concrete, wood, or whatnot. Uh, the important thing is that the company is servicing mostly the energy sector, which is in dumpster, where the capex cuts are significant. So now there is a interesting note from uh, Wells Fargo uh, a while back which talked about how late last year at the investor day the management discussed how they will be able to uh, aggressively cut the cost and keep the EBITDA at 300 million dollar run rate annually and continue to get four percent um, cumulative uh, average uh, cumulative annual growth rate uh, from fiscal 2015 level and beyond margins they said that will stay around 17 percent so a lot of things that were said in the at the analyst day or the at the investor day uh, late last year essentially did not pan out if you look closely what happened right here very recently last week the stock kept down sharply because first of all the ceo stepped down without giving a formal notice um, he basically departed and the second thing that happened was the company guided revenues that came in well below expectations so I have some notes over here um, the company guided that uh, the sales are approximately running 263 million dollars versus the uh, the analyst expectations of 270 to 280 let's call it midpoint 275 so whatever they said uh, basically back then um, right here according to what the Wells Fargo note points out did not pan out which tells me that they're going to have to lower the expectations. They put out very uh, bullish expectations back in late 2015, which are not which are not materializing. Now, if I go to the option market, I see small. This is not significant. I'll be very clear about this. These are small put buyers. 400 contracts bought today. They bought them for 75 cents. These are April 22.5 puts. They bought uh, they bought them for 75 cents offer when the bid on these was 55 cents basically a small cheap shot in the name that never sees any unusual option activity and they're betting on stock crashing essentially from here and so this would be the picture right here it hasn't really done much it didn't really collapse back in January but it didn't really go up with the rest of the market either but uh, but uh, you know they're buying a little bit uh, of put activity is picking up here looking for this to move down after earnings tomorrow morning now after the CEO departed last week uh, SunTrust downgraded the stock to neutral because of uncertainty another thing I will show you quickly is now the company first of all has you know quite a history of actually really setting very low expectations and then beating those expectations so quick history shows that they beat EPS here by six cents they beat EPS here by what like uh, nine cents they beat EPS here by 11 cents but those beats are getting smaller and smaller the delta is getting smaller and smaller you know so even with the low bar of expectations they said they're having difficulty gradually beating those expectations but the more importantly here right here is the is how the revenue or the, the EPS projections are just trending down for the last two years while the stock has essentially done nothing so you can see that if I go here at the end of 2015 they were looking for 2016 EPS of two dollars and four cents that green line right there in the middle is 2016 projections now they're looking for a dollar 26 or I can you can just look at right here the consensus constantly moving down basically because the company keeps guiding down and the 
and the fact that just last week they cut estimates and the CEO departed and SunTrust downgraded the stock tells me that there's trouble ahead. Now, it is a, there's another important thing to point out here. Um, went straight to see how the short interest is doing. This is the short interest on ATU. Kind of gives you the idea how it uh, was basically sort of stable for from all the way from November until February. And then boom, it jumped to 6.6 .6 million shares. So about 11% of the float is now sold short. And looking at last two years of history, this is the highest short interest we have in the stock. So right at the beginning of March, short started to pile in. The short float jumped big time. And yet the stock has done nothing. And now we got, we got a little doji here right now. And we got a little bit of put buying in April 22.5 strike puts, which is right here. So they're looking for a move down, a crash. If you're going to trade this, just understand that anytime when you're playing earnings, you're looking for something that is, uh, you know, use, use lunch money. What is lunch money? Maybe it's $100 for you or maybe it's $1,000 for you. You have to decide that for yourself. But whenever making an earnings play, make sure that you're using lunch money, a small dollar, something that you're comfortable losing if it doesn't pan out. Also, the liquidity is going to be very tight on this, so keep that in mind. What I mean by that is if the stock actually jumps and goes against you, it, if it doesn't fall, the bid on this April 22.5 puts will really come down sharply to like maybe 10 or 20 cents if it starts to run against you. So closing it, you know, even when you're trying to just get out, is going to be a little difficult because the liquidity is just going to simply hurt you. But if it works, these puts can really pan out. They carry a delta of 0.39 with their April and the stock is, you know, is 23.05. So, I mean, they're, it's not far off where the, where the stock is trading. So they could really pan out. So you got CEO departing, you got earnings coming down sharply. Uh, we looked at the history. You got company cutting guidance last week. You got SunTrust downgrade. You got some little bit of put buying in April 22.5 puts. And you have a stock that hasn't actually really done much, which means the, the sentiment is fairly neutral at this point, which means finally the reality will set in if it starts to collapse from here. Um, so that's my thinking here. The next one I wanted to look at is NOAA. Now, uh, what is NOAA? This is this is a sh this is based in Shanghai, and uh, it's basically a wealth management company. Um, this company provides all kinds of uh, investment advisory services to uh, to uh, uh, I guess high net worth individuals. Very dif difficult to get uh, to get any input on this from you know Wall Street research to give me some high you know some good color. Um, but here's something interesting that I found out. This will be reporting earnings tomorrow. Uh, now, there's no activity in this particular case in the in the option market. I don't see any much open interest here. I looked at both calls and put side. Um, there's no activity. Actually, this is ATU. Never mind. NOAA is right here. So here's NOAA. There's a little bit of open interest, but I looked into this. These are mostly mix of buying and selling here. I looked at the history. There's not much going on really here. Very low activity. Um, and there's just nothing to really look at. So the activity is not giving us any color. However, there's something interesting that happened l on March 8th. If you go to your, if you have Twitter, if you use Twitter, you know, this company called Geo Investing is basically another short seller that's trying to make a name for itself. And it's, it's, it's wanna be like, uh, what's the Muddy Waters or, uh, or Citroen research, you know, basically a specialty research shop that wants to just short stocks because they see red flags everywhere. They came out back in March 8 and issued nonstop one after another massive bearish call on the stock. Um, our latest, you can read it all about it on Twitter. Our latest to Noah shows why we think it is totally uninvestable. We believe it's dangerous, new share structure, whatnot. Um, talked about how it's a $7.6 billion Ponzi scheme. Um, and, and, and believe that uh, the collapsing Chinese stock market would lead to very poor results in 2016. Now that part just on the surface that if it is, if NOAA is truly is in the business of providing investment advisory services to high net worth individuals, you know, maybe it is true that if China mark, Chinese market is collapsing, this stock will get hurt because it's very, very tailored to the performance of the stock market. Uh, here, this is what I was talking about. Their internet banking is a shadowy business with $7.6 billion Ponzi scheme in China. You can read it all about it here. Uh, you know, here, where did I go? I had it up somewhere. 
right here. This is their website, Geo Investing. They came out with this report on March 8th, so two weeks ago. It's a long report discussing exactly why they think this thing is basically going, going south in a significant way. Um, and uh, However, they came out with the report right here. This is March 8th when they published the report. The stock jumped the next on Friday, but I believe it was related to the massive short covering rally we saw in the overall market after ECB um, decided to you know, launch a bazooka with new money printing and whatnot, which led to significant rally in emerging market stocks. We were discussing a lot of emerging market stocks. So I think this was, if I simply go to five minute chart you'll see how it was basically on Friday it jumped sharply and then it started to fizzle away now there is no put activity in this and uh, but this guy this geo investing whatever this company is is out with a very bearish note back on March 8th and uh, and the last thing I'll show you is the short interest where is it um, this is the short interest relatively stable it is it is sitting at near two-year high. It has been stable, but it is near two-year high, over five million shares. If I go here, you'll see the short interest is 30%, and it's just been like this for several months now. So it hasn't changed much from this. Um, something I'm not exactly sure if I want to buy into the argument that these guys are putting out with the bearish call I haven't read their report completely yet but if you go to the uh, if you go to the Twitter handle for example just to show you how these guys are moving a stock right here this morning they were trashing NHTC Beijing office so these guys put out a brand new short on another stock called um, NHTC and by by literally you know talking about pictures and how they think this is a total scam and whatnot and their total revenues are at risk and so on but it's having an impact I mean I don't know if they're telling you the, the, the truth or not but here's that stock in HTC in which they came out with a short thesis this morning and here the stock is down seven percent so it is definitely having an impact so if they're even half right about what Noah is truly and considering the fact the Chinese market is actually falling has been acting very weak and this company is in the wealth management business in China maybe there's some truth to the fact that this could collapse back to new 52 week low after earnings come out um, it did crash last time as well when they reported earnings and there have been other gaps down the care and and before this before earnings over here because there was a pre announcement and so on and so on uh, not much activity to see though just these two stocks on my surface and uh, and we'll see how these uh, perform tomorrow that's it